Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Squarespace. Use the promo code TWIST8 when signing up to save 10%. And by GoToMeeting, use the promo code START for your free 30-day trial. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Friday, so it's our news roundtable. Liz Gaines is with us from All Things Digital, All Things D. John Ferrara, the CEO of Nimble and uh, Serial Entrepreneur. Tyler Crowley with some insights, hopefully. And Kieran Kelly is going to read the news. It's going to be a great episode. We have a lot to discuss. Stick with us. That's what it's all about, man. Hey, Sid. Money is the root of all evil. How it feeds my people yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money Spend the money and defeat you yeah. Money is the root of all evil what? Funny how it feeds my people yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals Until we get the money Spend the money and defeat you Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome with This Week in Startups. And boy, we've had a great summer. I've been taking it easy in August. Ugh. Yeah, I just do like one episode a week because I'm trying to spend time with the fam and relax a little bit, and uh, it's yeah, it's totally not working. <laughs> anyway, things are just so busy. Um, but uh, we're gonna have a great show today. Liz Gaines from All Things D, one of my favorite bloggers, journalists, uh, thinkers, pundits, uh, is gonna be on the program. John Ferrara, of course, from Nimble, uh, which is just doing awesome. And Lon Harris, I guess, took a job. And that job doesn't allow him to take a day off a week. I don't know what these people are thinking at that other job. Um, and so he can't read the news anymore. But he's doing This Week in Movies, so you can ch- tune into that. Uh, but Kieran Colley will be reading the news today from the launch ticker. And Tyler is back from Europe. and um, For a few days. For a few days, but he's going back. <laughs> Heading back uh, Wednesday. Uh, very good. And uh, I saw the photo. So, yeah, everyone in Stockholm. I um, saw the photo. You didn't see anything. I saw nothing. You saw nothing. I saw nothing. No, uh, but I think I know why you're going back to Stockholm. Uh, yeah. But for the people. Leave it at that. Yeah, for the people, for my, for my friends in Stockholm who are listening, I'll be back. For your uh, fans. On the 7th. Yeah. Hey, and uh, I'm a fan of Squarespace. Squarespace, what an amazing service. I use it all the time. It's really the best web publishing uh, service out there, the best content management system. Gorgeous, um, gorgeous, professional-looking, beautiful designed uh, websites, including um, these beautiful ones right here. Look at this. This is the Kubert. Am I pronouncing that correct? I, f- I feel like it's probably like some of this great artist, and I'm pronouncing his name wrong or her name wrong. Anyway. Beautiful website. Look at this Ishimoto one. And it all looks good, uh, whether you're on the web, whether you're on um, uh, your web browser, your desktop, or if you're on an iPhone, you're on an iPad. It just works. And if you have those people, and it was really interesting, Tyler. Somebody was like, I just gave Jason's commercial for Squarespace to a family member. And this is what it's about. You have a family member or a business you know that has to build a website. My wife is going through this right now. She's got her Give Smoothie company. She's like, I need to build a website. I'm like, you need to build a beautiful website? Squarespace. Squarespace, you need to build a beautiful website. This is neuro-linguistic programming. I am hypnotizing you, and I have a really great idea, John. I want to talk to you about it later for my own religion. I want to hear it. I am going to do my own. It's Calicanology. It's going to be, <laughs> I'm having my own. Well, seriously, everybody's got their own religion, and this is like the only thing left. I, I need a new challenge. So I think when I'm, I'm 41 now. When I turn 50, I'm starting a religion. This is what I've decided. I thought you had one. Who's, who's all those followers? No, I there? know, but this is, I'm going to dovetail it into that. It's going to be like a religion based on entrepreneurship. And like we're gonna like read from the book of Jobs, like you know, literally, we we'll just like open up the Steve Jobs book and we'll read from you know all these different entrepreneurs, and it'll be for people who are creationists, but not creationists, but like they're creators. Where they make something in the universe. Will they worship well, Jason. Jason. They will worship the act of creation, well, making something. But where, where, the, where will you go to Cupertino and you know worship at the at the? Oh, there'll be all or? kinds of different. Yeah, we're gonna come up with a church kind of situation. It'll be like a church. Yeah. Um, and there'll be like all kinds of iconography and everything. It's I, gonna be I'd, awesome. I'd love to join you on the pulpit. Some people call me the right Reverend John Farrar. So, Absolutely. So I, I, I'd we're gonna to have reverends and we're gonna have yeah priests and nuns and everything. Hallelujah. Uh, exercise hallelujah. bad. Uh, exercise ideas. bad products and yeah. bad startup ideas. Yeah. Absolutely. It's gonna be amazing. Anyway, a long way of saying Squarespace is. See, what I like to do is I like to drop my crazy ideas in the middle of the commercial. Because then people are like, oh, wow, he always says something interesting in the middle of the commercial, so I've got to stay tuned in. Interesting um, or crazy? 
Exactly. Hey, anyway, Squarespace is great. Whether you're making a religion or you're making a beautiful website for your family's uh, business or your small business, medium-sized business, large business, and you can purchase a yearly or bi-yearly plan and get 20% off. And you get 10% off with the coupon code TWIST8, T-W-I-S-T-8. So please go to squarespace.com and use the code TWIST8, TWIST8, T-W-I-S-T-8, and you'll get a free domain name as well. These guys do a great job. I give them my highest endorsement. It's a really well professionally run service uh, by great people. Hey, let's go to the first story, Karen. Okay, so we all know what happened about six weeks ago. By the way, just I want to point out, you guys got to get a better background for Karen. She's like, it looks like she's in a, a closet or something. It's so black behind you. Yeah, better background, please. Okay. Good. So we all know Marissa took the reins at Yahoo about six weeks ago. Yep. Since then, she's been busy Googleifying Yahoo. She's brought back free food. She's gotten rid of some of the bureaucracy. Actually, she came out with a memo uh, just last week about that. She's going to make Yahoo the best place to work. She's gotten rid of some of the top execs. We weren't surprised to see people like Ross Levinson leave because he was the interim CEO. Uh, the top HR person is also out. She's brought in a new chief marketing officer, Kathy Savitt of Lockers. So how would you rate Marissa's performance so far? Uh, Liz, what do you think? A, B, C, D, E, F, what? I think she needs as long as possible to withhold to, to hold people off from rating her. Yeah. You know, all the stuff that she's going to do that will make the company better, like spending money on better food or amenities or not treating people like just regular employees, treating them more like Google people, um, buying interesting companies, bringing in interesting hires, that all is going to cost money and not be good for the bottom line for a while. So she just needs to... Uh, I don't know. I think grading her is, is, is a little cruel at this point. Great. Let's do it. Uh, so <laughs> what do you give her, Liz? <laughs> give her a grade. Come on, play along. I mean, she, I have to say... We'll give her an incomplete. How about that? No, not allowed. You've got to <laughs> give her a grade. Let me tell you uh, how you I can would... can make it up next semester. Yeah, exactly. Uh, incomplete. You can make it up over the summer. No, it's going to be a letter grade. We have to give a letter grade. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give her an A. And I'll tell you why. It's not just because we're friendly. Um, it's because people are excited and interested in Yahoo, and it feels like there is hope. And to come into that place and to set, I mean, look, Scott came in, and people were like, oh, my God, Yahoo is going to go off the rails and burn a fiery death. Ross came in, and people were like, well, he's got media chops. This, you know, it's, who knows? But now people are actually like, well, She's bringing in top talent. She brought in this person um, I don't, from that. Kathy Savage. Kathy Savage. Yeah, which I don't know her, but I kind of find that business is a little bit of like point system scammy. Oh, so, yeah. You were all over the scamminess of that last Yeah, because yeah. I was getting spammed by people who were doing that mm -hmm. sort of system. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who she is exactly, but it does look good for her that she brought in. A, she's bringing in senior talent um, who are somewhat respected in the industry, I think. Um, and to even just tackle the peanut butter manifesto is clever. And to tackle, like, hey, we want to make this better. To do something as savvy as put in the free food. All of those things are small things that at least that the employees know that the CEO has hope and is engaged and they're going to give it a really good time. You know, somebody, they're going to really give it a good effort. So regardless of what happens, I, I give her an A because she's coming out of the gate getting all this positive attention so this for is, the company. This is despite the fact that... Do you that want to work at Yahoo? No. No. <laughs> definitely not. Uh, so but I do give it a... Why are you kissing up? Uh, I'm not oh. kissing up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll, I'll admit we're friendly. I mean, um, I've had dinner with her a couple of times, and she's always spoken at the conferences. So I, I mean, I we're not like BFF or anything like that. Far from it. But um, I, I am a fan. I guess I'm a fan of hers. I think that she's a good product person. I think she's very smart, and I, I'm rooting for her. You know, just like I was rooting for Ross as well. But I do think that she's at least doing something, and it feels like all the previous management of Yahoo did nothing. They were all paralyzed. She's not paralyzed. She's well, saying, she I'm banned the famous question, right? The what is Yahoo question. Yeah, it was a portal. Move on. And she said she's not even going to answer it. So right. at least she right. said, I'm not going to answer that, right? But I think she should say it's a portal. You know? Does it matter that the stock has taken a little bit of a beating and no. that she might not return no. the money to shareholders? Or? Well, that's it. That, I think wait, wait, Liz brought that relative up. Relative to the rest of the NASDAQ, has it gone down, though? Or is it just riding along with how it's Yeah, all I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's insignificant either way. You know, yeah. What do you think, John? I, I think you could learn a lot by talking to the team members. Yes. The culture is so important. Right. You can't lift a company without a team that believes. And 
I was fortunate enough to have a plane ride across the United States with a senior manager from Yahoo. Don't reveal who it is. I'm not. Don't reveal what their job function is because I want the honesty of what they said. Go right. Ahead. So, so basically, this person told me that they were embarrassed to even say they worked at Yahoo. They're right now. No, they were. Previously, they Previously, were. Previously, yeah. Yes. They said that, this person said that they basically thought the previous few CEOs were just not really connected with the team. She said, whoops, that... Okay, we narrowed it down to... That, that, it's a that, female executive. Okay. That Marissa has come in and lit the place up. That she has weekly uh, all hands on meetings. They used to have them on a quarterly basis. And the person, when the CEO wasn't even listening. Mm. Marissa's listening, she's engaging, and she's learning. This is what you do as a CEO when you go into a company. Yeah. And, and, and they say that she's a little intimidating with her intelligence and her, her focus and drive, but she's infectiously funny with her laugh. She's got right. this laugh that's just, that yeah. just, the people love that. Hey, charisma counts for a lot. Now, all that charisma in the world though, yeah. If you're not winning, yeah, it becomes kind of I, I, a little bit. Um, I don't know. It, it, it charisma can get you so far, right? And so what she's doing is focusing on the on the properties that can make money. There's too many properties at Yahoo. Sure, they're not a search company, but they no. do they do have properties that drive revenue, a lot of revenue, and I think they're under monetized. And what she's doing is figuring out which ones they are, and they're going to get narrow and focus, and that's why I think they're going to win. And I, I have so, what more, do you give her grade? I got one more piece of advice. Yes, I think she she should take the CEO of LinkedIn, Jeff Weiner, to dinner. I think she could learn a lot from Jeff because Jeff's been through the same situation. Right. Going to LinkedIn, right. new and fresh, got to learn, make things happen, from focus. Yahoo. And he, was a, and he was a senior VP he might know where some of Yahoo, so he knows a lot of stuff. All right, so what letter grade do you give her? I'm giving an A. Did I mention I'm giving an A? Um, I'm going to give her an A. Oh, wow. I'm going to give her an A. All right, Liz, what's your grade? Come on now. Two A's. What do you give her? Um, C. Really? A C? Do explain. Come on. What could she have done better? You've got to really earn an A. you got to wow. All right. But I'm, I contend that it's not the end of any semester yet. She hasn't even had an earnings call. That's true. I, I, don't, I don't think he could grade this early in the semester. I know, but there part of go. the fun yeah. of journalism and television and... Mm, <clears throat> color. What do you call journalism and entertainment? What do they call it? Sensationalism. That? Yeah, uh, part of the fun of sensational journalism, there's a term for it. It's to come up with little devices like that to start discussions. Besides, good way for me to suck up if I try to do a business development deal with Mahalo.com. Um, well, I think it's also worth bringing up the list of potential companies that Yahoo might acquire, and this is a okay. list that actually Liz and Kara put together. Okay, let's go through Liz it and Kara's list. It includes Foursquare. Okay. Foursquare, okay. Zynga, Not a chance. Flipboard. Not a chance. Yelp. Oh, Flipboard, yes. Good. Yelp. Not a chance. Path. Pinterest. Not a chance. Not a bump, chance. Pulse. Easy. Food spotting. Yes, okay. Go through a little bit slower, and I'll give you the why it can't happen or it will. Go ahead. Okay, so the first one was Foursquare. Not a chance, because uh, the founders want to see it through all the way, so unless their business was crumbling or something, they're not selling that. Liz, you agree? Not a chance, right? Not I a chance. I think there's a very low chance that one. Okay, so we said that's but there, There's only one founder at this point, right? Yeah, exactly. The other Next one company? Zynga. Zynga, um, not a chance. Unless Mark Pincus wanted to retire, he's got too big of an ego, he's going to want to see it through, and unless they made him CEO. So the answer for that one is absolutely not. Uh, Liz, what have do you Have you looked at the stock? Yeah, it's like 280 or something, right? But they have a billion dollars yeah, in cash. There's a dollar sign, or there's a, a, a period really early in the 280. Yeah, but I mean, if they, it's so hard to sell because he's got control of the company. He's got those like founder shares. Yeah. So he, basically, in, in both of those, I mean, I don't know if you've been watching uh, my coworker Trisha Duryea's reporting, but uh -huh. there is a steady stream of executives going out to exit. Right. And and she's had one almost every day this week. Important people. Yeah. So I mean, it's he's basically going to have to reboot the place. But I know Mark really well. I mean, he's he's a hardcore executive who can replace those people and start over. And those and he's got a billion dollars in revenue and a billion six in cash. I mean, he, it would take him. I think I calculated it would take like five or six years for him to run out of cash at this point, you know, and so I, I can't possibly see Zynga selling. What's the next one? Flipboard. Now this one, definitely, right? Don't you think, John, yeah. Flipboard could, because Flipboard to me 
is like, it's never going to be a great standalone company. I don't mean to be cruel or anything like that. I just think it's more, it's like an app. And unless they had a content business to couple with it, it can't be a successful thing. Because all it is is a, a layer of, on top of it. But if you own the content, if That's Gawker owned Flipboard, oh my God, can you, well, Gawker Media plus Flipboard would be incredible. That's what I worry about for things like Pulse and, and Flipboard and Zite is the, uh, is the data wars that, that are sort of yeah. on the horizon and then cutting off mm -hmm. on the data and the access. And without that, you can't surface the intelligence. Right, right. But the same way Twitter has basically strangled everybody. So Flipboard has tremendous downside right now, mm -hmm. an incredible product team. Yeah. And a, not a great long-term future, and not a lot of runway. Which is an acquisition target. Which makes them a perfect. Yeah. So you think, I think that's highly likely as yeah. a target. What do you think, Liz? It's quite possible. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting that they, I think they just, Flipboard put out some of the first numbers about its user base for this week, for like the first time in 10 months or something like that. <laughs> yeah, 30 um, million downloads. Up to, what was it, 10 million registered or 20 million registered? 20 million registered. I went over this with Kieran in the launch ticker. It was right. 20 million registered and 1.5 million daily active users. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Now, 1.5 daily active users is a significant number, but 20 million downloads, I guess that's whatever It's percentage. not tracking with the iPad. Yeah, that's Which definitely not tracking with the iPad. And what do they have that's defensible, right? That technology is so easily replicated that once F Flipboard put it out there, so many people copied it. I mean, Amazon uh, didn't. There was one editions, I guess, by AOL. I mean, everybody's and, making and Google, do, and do, Google made and theirs, and Yahoo made theirs. It's just like, do you use it? I have it. I don't use it. Yeah, I use Pulse. I and don't sign. use any of those. I just have like a researcher. I have two researchers who just type in all the information for me and summarize it, so I don't have to you're, visit all these blogs. You're a lucky. I man only visit I one blog, which is All Things D, and then the launch ticker after that. This is like I was talking with Walt about um, voicemail transcription. Yeah. And he was like, you know, I can't relate to this because I don't deal with my voicemail. My assistant does it. Yeah, exactly. This is the problem. You get so somebody asked me how much a stamp cost the other day, and I was like, let me think about that. Hmm. I don't know. I just have the stamps.com machine, and you know, that's it. All my bush, problems were solved. The bush has gotten trouble. You got to get back like on the that. ground so you can have an authentic experience. I'm like George Bush. Yeah. When he so didn't said. know, he's like, "Wow, this yeah. scanner is like, how? Did, wow, wow, that exists." <laughs> Jason, <laughs> how much? <laughs> I'm just Jason. driving my Tesla. What is a gas station? <laughs> uh, that's actually a good question. What is a gallon of gas right now? I'm gonna guess a gallon of gas is probably four, five bucks. You I, yeah. I was yeah. in a gas station in upstate New York last week. Okay, so you've I, been in yeah. one recently. I've been to one recently, but I didn't even look at the prices. So I don't because remember. Because it doesn't matter to you? No, it was a rent the car. I just put in the lowest grade, and that's it. So I don't know. But I'm guessing it's four or five bucks, something like that. All right. Yeah, but it's all going away anyway. It's all electric. Okay, let's go down this list. This is fun. Going down the list is fun. Okay, the next one is Yelp. Yelp, not a chance. Yelp is a juggernaut of a business. It's public. They got a ton of cash. They got a ton of upside on a global basis. And I, I think for... See, this is one of the problems... The, the challenge Marissa is going to have is there is a lot of ego in this game. A guy like Jeremy would never sell his company to Marissa, just like he wouldn't sell it to Larry and Sergey. Marissa. Well, uh, is that what I said, Marissa? Yeah. And there's the Google. Well, at, at Google, she was also trying to buy it, right? And she yeah. was also, at, and, and there's bad blood between Marissa and Jeremy from the Google right, days. Right, right. Um, because they just kept, you know, pu pushing Yelp down the page. So this is the problem. Marissa is a contemporary of a lot of these people like um, Mark Pincus um, or Dennis Crowley, I, I think some of them might see it as like failure in a way to sell to her, while others might think it's awesome to join her team. But it's going to be, you know, it's not like Steve Jobs buying your company, where like, oh, Steve Jobs bought my company, like, he's my hero. It's like, well, Marissa was this Google employee who is now in charge of this. I don't want to sell to her. That would feel like defeat to me, you know, Jeremy or whatever. That sounds like a problem. Do you, do you agree with that assessment? Because I'm not making that up. That's what somebody told me who what? may or may not be on this list. But what do you think, Liz? I think that's a, that's a serious dent in her ability to do something game-changing um, in terms of buying a really good product leader. Because I think you want people on your team who could do more than what they're doing, right? You want them to be really high quality. Yeah. She's going to have to really present herself as like Professor X and like, listen, Wolverine, Cyclops, whatever. You have superpowers I don't have and I need you. And that's just, that's not an easy thing to do. But she, I think she could do it. I don't know if she okay. could do it Dennis necessarily or Jeremy or Mark Pincus because just knowing those people, 
you know, and the fact that they have unlimited runway and ability to raise money, but, you know, she could get... She might get McClue, and is it Mike McHugh from Mike McHugh? Yeah, from Mike. Yeah. From, yeah. I, think she, I think she could convince Mike, and Mike's a pretty smart cat. So, right. What drives, the, I, what drives the eyeballs right now at at, at Yahoo? Well, it's, it's Yahoo not, Mail is number one. Okay. The, the, Yahoo homepage number two. That was my Yahoo point. Yahoo Sports News and Finance would be probably the three, four, and five. Am I right, Liz? Okay. Th this is my uh, point. Those are the most important products. Yeah, those are the top five. So, so let's just start with Mail. The mail experience. When I see someone at the Yahoo email address, you think loser. I'm, I'm not going to say loser, but I'm thinking dated, just a little yeah. bit sort of behind the curve, right? Yeah. Now, if you actually, and, and what's the experience like? What do they do with the mail? So I well, think I, they could. She's. She said she in the PB and J memo. Correct me if I'm wrong. One of the ideas that the employees had at one of her Friday sessions was to dog food, i.e., use ourselves, mm -hmm. their own mail product, and then make it better. Mm -hmm. If I was her. That's where I would be focused on my yeah. energy is Yahoo that, Mail. That, that, that's exactly my point. So, yeah. so if you take a look at Google, they've got Google Cal, Google Mail, and Google Contacts, which, which I've told Google many times that they're three separate programs and they don't connect and it's a problem. And they used to connect so well. And they never messenger. really did. They never did. Well, no, they were the no. first to have a single login for all those services, which was kind of cool. Today, why don't they make Flickr free? You know, like I just got a renewal for my fifty dollars Flickr. Why don't they just yeah. make Flickr super? Is it free? Oh, Liz is smiling. You have inf inside information. Oh, I'm smiling just because you were complaining. You're talking about the cost of gas, and now you're talking about how you don't want to pay for fifty bucks. Come on. <laughs> well, it's not that I, I don't want to pay fifty bucks. Is that I know, Liz. I don't know. You're like really busting my chops yeah, I like today. It. <laughs> I, Bring geez, it, Liz. I feel like. If You're I hanging would, out with Kara Swisher. If I was Marissa, yeah. I'd focus on the contact management experience. Well, here's yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. But and then again, since you're doing nimble, that would be. I, I'm not oh, wait anything. a second. <laughs> I'm not uh, saying anything. Let's call him out. Um, <laughs> no, but here's the thing. I don't like the idea of paying fifty bucks to Yahoo or Google or anybody like that. I want them to give me free stuff. Because they're big and they make a lot of money. Well, it's not just that. But and you're then when giving they give, them information, why doesn't you do? Oh, soon. here's a good one for her. Why doesn't she create a Dropbox competitor that's a hundred, like gig free? Because then she'll be anti to the startup ecosystem. Like, Whatever, you know, come on. Just it would be when Gmail said that they were giving five gig of email free or ten gig, and Yahoo was charging for that. It really shook things up. If she did a free version of Dropbox, that would be big. If I was her, I'd build a platform that get other people to build on top of it and create a community and. And, and All right, next that. company that she's not going to buy. Let's hear it. <laughs> next company is Path. Not a chance. Dave Morin is so long and so rich. No chance. Right, Liz? No chance. Yeah. He's just, he's on a mission, that guy. With, I mean, I, that's, I respect him. No, no way. He's not selling to anybody in that, in, in that regard. He doesn't need money. He's playing for ego. Go. Okay. Next. This one should be interesting. Pinterest. Now, there you go. See, now, yeah. Pinterest is a house of cards because they're so overvalued that like Bebo at the time or something like that, they might really be scared that that could collapse. Overvalued at what? Uh, well, I think they're, what, what, Liz, Pinterest last 1. valuation? 1.5 billion. 1.5 billion. I mean, that's not worth 1.5, they have 20 million uniques? It's the only app in the history of apps that my mom asked me to download it's, on her iPad. We're and not my, gonna, and my aunt and my sister and my how do you very monetize that. Yeah, yeah. so I, know, and, well, I, I Fab, is, Fab is making a lot of money and other places and, and um, the other one, uh, Fancy, which is really a better version of, I think Fancy is so sophisticated and awesome the compared fancy. to Pinterest. The yeah. Fancy is yeah. awesome. Um, it's so much more like, it's like Pinterest with the Pinterest next seven. Pinterest for men. What's that? It's Pinterest for men. No, I know, but it's got like the next six features that Pinterest should have added already. Um, but I just think Pinterest, is it 20 million uniques right now, Liz? Something like that? Yeah, I, I unfortunately I don't know. Yeah, somebody about. look it up on the thing, but it's I think it's Tyler. You should be looking these things up, Tyler, when I'm asking questions. Come on, he's you're fast on the Chile. keyboard. Exactly. Um, or Stockholm. He, he's, yeah, he's. Right, I know what he's thinking I about. Stockholm. Seen picture, yeah. <laughs> so he got Stockholm picture. syndrome. <laughs> Trust me, I saw the photo. I'd have Stockholm yeah. syndrome. Um, here's the problem. They have 20 million uniques, 1.5 billion dollar valuation. It's not. It's not worth more than Pinterest is worth 300, 400 million right now. God's honest truth. Ten dollars per unique per month, right? It's a two hundred million dollar company. They they should totally sell and take her money and remove all the risk. They wouldn't sell for that amount. No, I, they, what do you think, Liz? You, I mean, obviously we both agree, Liz, that it's not worth anywhere near one point five, right? I think it's actually an interesting company. I think that it has a, a, a lot of the element of the unknown about it, the TBD. Yeah. 
that they only just opened to the public and gave out an Android app and an iPad yeah. app like a week ago. Right. So I think there's a lot left. A lot left. But what do you think the valuation on a company with 20 million uniques and no revenue is, or minimal revenue? I mean, it's based on nothing, right? You're right. Yeah. It's not like trying to assign an amount per user at this point. It's it's not about how that. Many, it's about what, how yeah. Much so is Instagram, how much? It how says many uniques 53.7 yeah. in the U.S. 53.7 million uniques. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was 20 million members, and that's the people who watch. 15th with... in the U.S. 15... No, you have to be a member. You have to be a member. Well, no, I'm saying you could view it though. Are we looking at uniques to view stuff or? Uh, this but you would only be I'm, able. To... I'm on the Quantcast yeah. monthly. 53.7 U.S. What rank are they? 15. 15? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. It's, I think it's that's pretty than, significant. More than a couple hundred million. Yeah, it's yeah. probably worth a billion then. Uh, but anyway, that, that's one she could get. She could get that. And you know what? If, she, if Yahoo is going after women and that's a, you know, part of their push, um, maybe that's a good move. Let's go. What's a, so yeah, that's a, Liz, you agree that's possible? Pinterest? I think there's another issue with the, the founder there, Ben, is, you know, this is kind of his life's work. It's his personal idea he's had forever, and he's doing really well right now, and yeah. people think he's worth a lot, so mm -hmm. it would be a hard one, too. See, that's, the, I'll tell you what's changed. Zuckerberg, I, I think, I, this all goes back to Sean Parker, and I'll explain why after mm -hmm. the commercial break. Yeah. One second. We have to go to commercial break. Everybody, hold on. Oh, this is an easy one. Go to meeting. Mmm. GoToMeeting is perfect. I use it every day. I was just on a GoToMeeting this morning. I was on two or three yesterday. They let you host meetings. It's that simple. The meeting starts on time. The meeting is flawless. And I, we were on this call, and I was like, hey, let me show you something. And I ha they had the desktop, and they were controlling, giving me a pitch on an angel investment. I said, let me take the desktop. Let me show you something I have on my side. I showed it on my side. And then I said, OK, I'll be an advisor. And they gave me a, uh, you know, whatever number of basis points in the company to be an advisor. I flew back to them. They said, well, you should be on. We, are you on AngelList? I said, yeah, we're on AngelList. I said, okay, literally on the thing, I said, you um, put me as your referrer on AngelList. And they said, okay, well, they did that while I was watching on GoToMeeting. I said, okay, now give it back to me. And I confirmed. And they saw me confirm on my side. So we were like going back and forth. And this is stuff that would have taken 20 emails. And it would have taken me flying to Chicago to meet with a company, doing stuff. We did it all over uh, GoToMeeting, and it worked flawlessly. Citrix GoToMeeting. Liz is on GoToMeeting right now, uh, and it's yeah. flawless, and she looks great. Perfect, flawless HD. There's your endorsement right there. Liz Gaines says, use GoToMeeting. <laughs> She's like, I did? Okay. I don't endorse things. Come on. She's not allowed to endorse things, but she, do, she did click on it, and, and she felt safe enough to click on it. That's the other thing is it just works. You just get the link from us. You get the click. You link. Boom. It works. Macs, PCs, iPads, HD faces, awesome. Go to GoToMeeting, hit the Try It Free button, and click Start. And if you're a fan of the program, it is your geary. It is your honor. It is your humble duty to support our partners like GoToMeeting. Thank them at GoToMeeting on, their, on your Twitter account. And go to their page, GoToMeeting.com, hit the Try It Free button, and click the promo code Start. Listen, Second Market and Sean Parker changed the face of the internet industry because Sean Parker, having gotten his butt kicked so many times as an entrepreneur, and was considered kind of a loser for a little bit there before Facebook, like, oh, he couldn't get it done, you know, Napster failed, um, Plaxo failed, well, you know, failed, I'm putting in quotes, but, you know, they didn't work out the way. And then what he did with putting Zuckerberg in a power position with Facebook. And then the secondary market of people being able to cash out shares, which, by the way, Ron Conway was fighting against that and saying it was the end. You know, oh, Sean Parker was the devil, and this was the end of all things. And now, he, you know, Ron Conway is totally in support of it. Everybody came out against Sean Parker now, but this is the ramification of what the innovation Sean Parker had. Now nobody can buy these companies because all of these founders can sell their shares in the secondary market, or to Yuri Milner, or, who, or to DST, or whoever wants to buy them. And never leave the company. They've already, they've got all these companies went public before they went co public. Y Yahoo's going to have a hard time buying anything but the companies that are in trouble. It's changed the whole dynamic, hasn't it, Liz? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. So everybody that's agrees. That's this is the problem when everybody agrees. All right. Go down the list. What's next on the okay, list? Okay. So then uh, Kara and Liz had three companies that they noted were uh, not as big, high profile, or expensive. We'll just name all three of them Bump, Pulse, and Food Spotting. 
Bump is a good idea because there's a great technical team and they can make something into it. They can rename it. Nobody really knows what Bump is, but it's got payments. It's got that's a really good purchase for them. Um, food spotting would be a good technical team and that would be good for their um, like building a Yelp like competitor. Yeah, I agree with that. And food spotting's not going anywhere. It's not like it's gonna break out. It's too niche. And what was the third one? Pulse. Pulse. Pulse, great idea, yeah. They could rebuild it or they could build. Those are all good. Those would be all good Accuhires. And if, you know, like I said the other week, just go down the list of Y Combinator companies that never raised an A round from two or three years ago and just go on the Accuhire uh, jihad there. What's the next story? So the next story is the Apple Samsung patent trial, which, as we know, came yep. to a conclusion last week or mm -hmm. a little over a week ago now. And one billion dollars is what the billion. jury said uh, Apple mm. should get from Samsung. Right. Now, there have been a couple of other uh, verdicts in Korea. The judge kind of split. There were some, you know, Apple infringed a bit, Samsung infringed a bit. Japan actually came out and said that Samsung didn't do anything. Um, is this the end of the Apple-Samsung patent war? Are we actually going to see something change and what's going to happen with Google and Apple? This is all very complicated and unexpected actually, right? Like we didn't expect that it'd be this huge, you know, especially after the Google Oracle where they were like, yeah, they didn't really infringe anything, game over, zero dollars. And now you see a billion dollar verdict like this. And I have to wonder, is there a nationalistic thing going on now? I don't want to say racist, because it's not exactly racist, more nationalistic, where, and has anybody brought up the nationalistic thing here where in Korea, Apple doesn't win, and in Japan, Apple doesn't win, but in the United States, they clearly win a huge verdict. Is this a case of patent wars are going to go in the jury, the juries are going to vote for the home team? Well, the And has that been brought up by anybody? The, the one juror who CNET interviewed last week said that there was no hometown bias. And they, they followed the judge's instructions, and they yeah, really didn't find Apple. Yeah, I don't buy that. <laughs> I mean, who votes against Apple? I mean, if you're on a jury and you're like, yeah, I want Apple to lose. You know, it's like, well, what? That, that's the you don't biggest, like your iPad? That, that, I, it, if most of the jury were using or owned iPhones, yeah. there's already a bias. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the attorney, judge asked them what the, kind of phone they were using. I was about to that. say, the, the attorneys, yeah. the first thing they're going to do is ask what phone they have. Right, but I mean, it's just not possible for there not to be, everybody's got some level of bias, whether they know it or not, right? So I'm just wondering, I, I'm wondering if even bringing up the nationalistic thing is appropriate or if anybody else has brought it up. Was it brought up by anybody else or is that just my I own looked, like weird way to look at the world? I did look at it a bit yeah. since you asked in the ticker and I didn't see anybody really talking about it. I just bring that up because of Japan, but I mean, Japan's got a very weird history with Korea as yeah, well. Yeah, the Koreans hate them. <laughs> Big time, yeah. Well, yeah. they should. Um, well, historically, they should. Historically. Yeah. I, I think if you look back at the history of Japan, and yeah. it's in a, it's first they copied stuff, right? and they mass produced it, yeah. but when they started innovating, yeah. they really started to kick butt. Yeah. Right? And they would, I think you'd think they would be pro IP. I think that Samsung is a company I really respect from a technology perspective. They make great products that, that work, but I think they need to start innovating. I think they need to create a research center and, uh, and, and start building. Yeah, they, they knew they stuff. were breaking the patents. And I mean, yeah. I guess the thing is, it seems like Google and Apple are not going to go to the mat on the patent thing. They're just going to sort of settle it out and, you know. Um, Right, Larry and Cook spoke right, they last week or talking. something, according to Reuters. Right. I guess this is proving that with these huge patent things, anything can happen. It's incredibly hard to enforce them consistently. There's tons of interpretation, and everybody's got them. So it's now mutually assured destruction. So everybody's going to have to settle. It's going to be just a massive amount of settlements, or else nobody's going to be able to do any product innovation. So I think we're seeing what people thought would happen, right? Weren't we sitting here a year ago saying, this could become very messy. Now it's become mm -hmm. very messy, and now the CEOs of the company are starting to say, let's settle and unmess it up and come to some kind of agreement. So it's almost like they were all tough guys until they started you know, getting to round six or seven in the boxing ring, and they're like, boxing is no fun. Let, let's just go make products, right? Well, and they're tired of paying the lawyers. Yeah, I mean, but if you're paying 100 million to lawyers and make a billion, it's a pretty good investment. So, and then Samsung is saying, we own all these LTE right, right. patents. <laughs> And now we're not going to, if you launch the iPhone 5, which is supposed to have LTE as a big feature, we're going to sue you and try to get an injunction against that. It's now becoming mutually assured destruction, which I think means everybody will just start um, settling and, and tr doing truces.
Where you can't launch. Or you're not going to be able to launch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, does this trickle down at some point to lesser known or, you know, startups? I mean, well, you already have the patent trolls going after the small startups. The small startups don't talk about it so much. And what they do is all the patent trolls wait till a small startup starts to break out, like Yammer got hit. I think all the Foursquares and Gowalas all got hit with a patent, you know, they're, and they're just all being shaken down. And so I don't think that stops that trend. The small shakedown, I don't think it's taken away. But for these big behemoths, you know, they're going to have to start settling. And it's, you know, I mean, who, why should Google be, and Microsoft bought the billion dollars from AOL worth of patents, right? And Google bought the Motorola patents. Like, is this really a good use of their funds and the cash? Is that what shareholders want them doing? Is spending billions of dollars instead of R&D on patents? Though AOL shareholders didn't mind the, uh, the money. Yeah, of course not. Of course not. Anyway, I think the patent stuff is boring. And you have anything more to say about patents, Liz? Next. I think there's a couple interesting things. I think yeah. one is that Apple was willing to go into court and talk about all these its secrets. Like that, that seemed pretty big to me. That means that they they really thought they were going to win, and they this was very important to them because yeah. secrecy is like their it's what they do. Yeah. And that now they had people coming into court and saying, "This is what we were thinking about. Here are our emails. This is like they showed emails that showed products that have not even been released yet. You yeah. Know, things like that. And then I think the other interesting thing is that this report, which we we confirmed about. Um, Larry Page and uh, Tim Cook talking. So it'll be interesting to see now that they've kind of raised the stakes by having by Apple winning, um, how they figure out a way to go on without, like you said, just endless patent trials and extortion and settlements and all that. It's going to be interesting. What do you think, Liz, about the relationship with Apple and Google in a post Eric Schmidt and sadly, you know, uh, Steve Jobs passing away world? You know, those two seem to be at each other's throat about the issue, and obviously Steve Jobs made the declaration, you know, that he would absolutely destroy Android or whatever. You think Tim Cook is going to just... Right. thermonuclear war. Yeah, thermonuclear war quote. You think Tim Cook's going to be like, yeah, let's just all move on? I don't think he could do that, but, uh, but I think that that is absolutely what you want to watch. Um, and also remember that the Motorola buy was Larry Page's first big move. Right. So clearly he was thinking about patents at that point. Right. Yeah, now it'd be interesting if they're like, I bought all these patents, and all I got was this T-shirt. You know, like I don't even yeah, really need them. I can't use them. You know, and well, the fact that he has them means that they don't have to use them. Right. It's sort of that mutually assured thing. But now you still have Google, you still have Apple coming out with their own mapping program, mm -hmm. not redoing the YouTube app. You know, all the, yeah. not bundling the YouTube app. So, I mean, it still feels like those two are going to be at each other's throat. What's good about those two fighting it out is that Amazon now is being just like, well, who's going to pay attention to Amazon? But Amazon, I was like, I almost this week switched over to Amazon for MP3s because I use it for everything else. And I was like, I think I'm just going to start buying my MP3s here because I'm already logged into my Amazon Prime account. I'll just move off of here from iTunes and start using their locker and stuff like that. And today we have news or a, a rumor from the Wall Street Journal. I don't know if it's from all things the or the Wall Street Journal, but I saw an alert. They're going to do an ad-supported Kindle Fire, or maybe that's what the Kindle Fire 2 will be. I had not seen that yet. Yeah. Well, they are, they already are kind of ad supported, but maybe like an offers thing or something. It was kind of unclear. Yeah. And, you know, this is back I mean, to. We'll learn a lot more next week about yeah. that. Well, next week, the Kindle Fire 2 comes out. And, you know, at $199, and they think they're going to get the Prime supporters, what if they forced you to watch a 30 second or 45 second video every once a day? And they get, I don't know, 10 million people watching that, and they get, you know, a $50 CPM on that, and they're making $500,000 a day from that ad. I mean, that adds up pretty quick. It's $250 million a year or something in advertising. They get, they get a quarter million dollars in advertising, and I mean, this could be very big. They could be taking a, a good amount of money off the cost of the tablet. Well, that's the whole thing. They've been selling it with. I think almost no margin, right? So, yeah, they lose 10 bucks on each yeah. one or something. But now if they lose $100 each, if there's a $99 Nexus 6, iPad 7 in the market, what is that going to do to tablets and the Amazon store? And I mean, this could be really transformative if an iPad becomes a free device eventually or a $99 device. Well, isn't that what happened with phones? It did. And look what the, how transformative that has been. So yeah, I just didn't think it was going to come this quick. Okay. 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 There you go. Next story. Okay. Ooh.
Next, Nobody has anything to say. <laughs> Next story. Um, this was kind of fun. President Obama did a Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Yes. Which he only answered 10 questions, spent 34 minutes, and almost melted the Reddit servers. This was very unannounced. They wanted right. it to be exciting. And so um, didn't really say anything new. It was pretty much boilerplate stuff. So actually... Who really wins from this? Is, does this, you know, is this more more important for Reddit than it is for Obama? What did you think about that, Liz? Obama. I thought it was really cool to read Obama uh, unedited to see his typos and stuff. That was my favorite part. <laughs> um, he, other he, than that, I mean, yeah, he didn't say anything too interesting, but he, you know, he made he made a couple of jokes in keeping with memes on the site and stuff. So he, you know, it's pandering, but that's okay. Um, it took the spotlight off the Republican convention, so that was kind of blatant. Um, but it was, it's only really relevant to the people who are already there and they couldn't even get in because the site was down. Um, yeah. I also wondered how they kept uh, Obama's connection up to it because everyone else was having trouble logging in. But Yeah, they must have had him going in through a, you know, another server to publish or whatever. Um, it is interesting. I mean, but people do this on a pretty regular basis, right? Like the first time he was on YouTube, the first time the president was on Twitter, the first, you know, it's always like a first time to do this stuff. What I thought was interesting is that somebody in the White House, like if it was me in the White House, I wouldn't have let him do it. Yeah. Only because Reddit has like the jail bait and the death photos and the porn photos and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, somebody's going to say, there'll be a headline within minutes that says Obama giving you know, um, Q&A to porn, death, gruesome, pedophile site. The next day? Yeah, I think Reddit's bigger than that. It's, it, Reddit is, is the internet now, you know? It's like oh. just a site you have to go to. Right, exactly. It is the internet, but it does have, specifically, you can go to a URL that's Reddit slash whatever, jailbait, this, that, the other thing, and it's, it's a big controversy around those things, so anybody who's on the other side, Republicans, whatever, Tea Party people, can be like, oh, Here's a screenshot of Reddit with the logo with the president. Here's a screenshot of Reddit and, you know, really bad stuff. Um, well, and you said that Gawker did do that. Story. And Gawker did do that headline, so. You, you know, as much but as... It, I didn't know. I was curious that the people didn't jump all over, the, like the, you know, the Huffington Post kind of people or whatever. As much as it was maybe pandering or, or scripted, right. I think it's relevant that a, a leader of a, of a country right. is social. right. I, I think that if they're getting on a live uh, platform and engaging people, I think it's setting an important tone, not just for politics, but also for leaders and, and businesses. I think there's a lot of CEOs who are afraid to tweet. I think there's a lot of CEOs who don't engage. I, I agree with you, and I, I, it's amazing. I just got an email from Barack Obama that says, hey, that's the subject line, hey. <laughs> and then I had one this morning from Michelle. And I'm like, and Michelle's. I was just gonna bring up Michelle's because I, let me just do a search in my on my BlackBerry for um, Obama, my last two emails. So Michelle sent an email this morning at uh, 8:29. I've learned to shrug off what Barack's opponents say about him. We know who he really is, a wonderful father, and who's made this difference in people's lives. But not everyone knows him as you and I do. And because of the nonstop negative ads, and she's like, it's like a four-paragraph email that reads like it was a one-to-one -one email. And then but it one wasn't. From, it wasn't. And that's what I was trying to say about yeah. the Reddit thing was yeah. that he was actually typing it himself, which was cool. Yeah. Right. And then, but then this email from Obama where he, I mean, who puts the subject, what president sends you an email like, hey? Yeah. I mean, it should be like, hey, OMG, today's the last <laughs> day of my campaign, LOL. I, you know, like, I mean, he's really taking it to another level. You, you, you know, m most people are afraid to actually get out in social and, and engage. Most companies are. They hire community managers and put them in the front of the company, and that's their, that's their engagement. That's their listening. And are he's they... like, thank you, Barack. I mean, it's not even like, thank you, President Obama, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. He's out there, man. And it's like every he day. He posted some animated gifts recently. No. Yes, I'll send them. Is he Doogie? On the site. Is he going to do the Dougie? It's on the on the White House. Obama Dougie. <laughs> That's what they should do. He should do a Dougie. Like he'll teach you how to Dougie. Um, okay, next story. All right, listen, Obama's cool. Right. Okay. All right. I, I just want to say his final his final sign off on the uh, on the Reddit thing. He said, by the way, if you want to know what I think about this whole Reddit experience, and then in all caps, not bad, with an exclamation point. So yeah, that sounds like he might be willing to come back and do it again. Cool. That is funny though. Animated gifts, really. 
like for your Tumblr page? All right, next story. All right, next story. So uh, the much maligned Facebook stock, the news has not gotten better, unfortunately. Just today, Facebook hit a brand new low, $18 a share, 52% off the IPO price. Um, you know, the first quarter results were not really all that impressive to Wall Street. So where is this all headed? I mean, you know, I know when we had the IPO uh, news panel a couple months ago, Tyler talked about how it was the right price to short. It seems like the... Stock is only go going Tyler. down from there. Where's it go? This is an absolute, now it's in absolute crisis mode. I mean, this is seriously a crisis, not because they're going to run out of money or Facebook's going anywhere, but because of the talent issue that, we, that Liz just uh, alluded to with Zynga. It's kind of a crisis for Zynga losing all these senior executives. There's no reason to stay if your options are underwater that far. I mean, obviously, they'll reprice them. But it also just puts this negative stigma on the company, like, well, face. If, if the stock is off 50%, people are basically going to say, well, Facebook's over. Because money is a pretty good proxy for relevance. Right? If people are not willing to place the bet, the company's not all that relevant, and there's problems. And so why would I go work there when I could work at Pinterest or some other place where it's up and coming and the stock's going up? I think this is a full-on crisis for them now. Um, and the price target got changed, right? They're Right. The the one bank this morning, that was that was really what, what brought it down. Uh, they slashed their price target from twenty five to fifteen dollars and wow. they reaffirmed their underperform rating. Was this like a real bank or was this like one it's, of these like web bush securities? No, no, no. Actually it's funny. It was BMO Capital Markets. I have a friend who works for BMO in Chicago. It's a Canadian bank. Don't talk. Oh, so it's not a real bank, it's Canadian. Don't talk to Web Bush guys, they're friends of mine. No, I know the Web Bush guys are, but guys. the Web Bush guys are like Facebook is going to be worth a hundred dollars a share, and then they're like, "Oh, we were wrong." You know, I'm not. I'm not. I don't mean to give okay. them a hard time, but, but but they're nice guys. They're nice guys, but I mean, it, it's not like it's a Morgan Stanley no. or whatever. I don't know. Um, what do but you think, Liz? Is this a full-on crisis now with the stock, Facebook or price share price? Uh, I'm going to pass on this one. Why is that? Oh, because my husband started working at Facebook, so I can't talk about it anymore. Really? Yeah. Oh, Ethics. so. Wow, I had no idea. So now, basically, your net worth is tied to Facebook. Well, I mean, I, I would like to say that I am not biased, um, yeah. but I don't want there to be any question of it out, so I just don't talk about Facebook anymore. Oh, wow. Except to whine about their apps and stuff like that. I mean, Facebook... I like the new app, the new iOS app. Really? It's, it works it's really faster. Well. Oh, the yeah. iOS yeah. app. You talking about. I think yeah. she's talking about the crummy apps and the app thing oh. when they pollute your feed and stuff like that. He, Okay, let me let me ask you, Tyler. I just looked over his computer, and he was on Facebook. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people I know spend a lot of time on Facebook. Right. Okay. That's not going to change overnight. No. They, they, let's let's say they're not monetizing it as effectively as say LinkedIn is today. They're right. not LinkedIn. Right. But I do think that they'll figure out the monetization, and they're not going to go away. They're going to have some talent issues. I think they'll fix that. Um, I, I guess the question is, will LinkedIn and Facebook's market caps ever meet? $40 billion for Facebook, I, I, $11 billion for LinkedIn? I think that LinkedIn hasn't started monetizing their, 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 their network yet. I think Facebook some, hasn't? Or LinkedIn? LinkedIn hasn't effectively even oh, started. Really? I think, I think we're, we're not even... All they've done is monetize recruiting. They haven't monetized sales solutions or marketing. Right. And they've got a lot of smart people there, and I think they're on a, they're on a, uh, a roll. This is, but yeah. So anyway, the whole concept that Facebook was worth a hundred billion dollars, and you know, and I said that's kind of crazy, and people were like, oh no, it's a given, and you know, I don't want to say I was right. It's still the most amazing business that's been built in the history of Silicon Valley, second only to maybe, I don't. know, It's in the top five businesses ever built in the history of the United States, probably. Facebook, in terms oh, of the, almost a billion users, exactly, and and that is just and a billion, almost a billion people, or it's going to be a billion people is just a phenomenal. So you can't say anything like I, that. I, this is a I, bad I, business or anything like that. But boy, did they! This is the uh, problem with the secondary market and people. You know, you have to really do this right, and yeah, they fumbled it. They fumbled it big time, yeah, big I, time. You know, they they say they didn't do anything illegal, and they probably didn't. But they, no, didn't, certainly they, they didn't. They didn't handle it right. They didn't so, communicate effectively. So who do you blame? Who do you? Well, listen. If you're if you're Zuckerberg or you're like the the people who are shareholders of Facebook, they actually raised a ton of money and were able to liquidate a lot of their own stock at a high price. 
The people who lost were retail investors who bought at that price, and in some cases, institutional investors who bought at the price. Now, if those people hold on to the stock, they're going to be fine, probably, because Facebook's not going anywhere, and they still have tons of monetization to do. Well, and that was the interesting so, thing, is that Yelp this week, they had some of their investors had the ability to liquidate and didn't. Right. And so the stock went up. Yeah. So, I mean, I, one of the problems with Facebook is, is that it, people made so much money off of it that those people needed to get that money. It was just like such a huge amount of money that even selling a 20, some of your shares at 20 is worth it. Like for Peter Thiel, how much more money did he need to make off that investment? He has to get liquid at some point, you know, and you he's been waiting for seven years. You got to di diversify. And he's got to diversify. So yeah. there's so many people so vested in that they'd have to diversify, which puts downward pressure on it. But it's probably a buy right now. I mean, I, if we're sitting here three years from now, the stock's going to be double or triple. Right. But there's supposed to be, I think, another billion shares that can be unloaded in October, something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> if you if you look at the price earnings ratio, it's a sixty price earning ratio, and Google is a twenty price to earning ratio. Is it growing three times faster than Google? I think it is probably growing two or three times faster. So, you know, it's probably getting to the right price right now. That's what, what we're seeing is it's getting to the right and, price. And because of that, I blame more the banks than Facebook itself. But the banks are the ones who got hurt too because they had to buy a bunch of shares at this, right? Yeah, but they're playing both sides of the table. That's true. They can't really? lose. Really? Do they uh, do that? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, they can't lose, right? That's so, like their I mean, new way to play. It's, new it's way? Really, yeah, well, I mean, no, I, I know. know. But, I, but they're not just making money on the saying, transactions, like, but they're, yes. They're, yeah. It's disgusting. I don't, I don't know that it, Facebook is really the one to blame in all that. It, it's Facebook will be here in five years, and the stock yeah. will be higher. And I agree, so, and I do yeah. think it, it turns into a buy. It's not far away from a buy in my mind. Right. What are you thinking? Like 15, uh, 12, you're buying to the cows come home. 12. If it loses 12, a third of its value, if, if, then it makes at it 12, a... 12, I start thinking of buying, yes. Yeah, then it's a $25 billion company. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, for a company with $5 billion in revenue, or whatever it is, a billion dollars in earnings, it's going to be coming as serious mm -hmm. And I don't buy. think it can really go below 10. No, it can't. Okay, next story. Next story. I want to get Liz involved in a story. Yes, yes. So the next story, she should be able to comment on about Apple's supposedly debuting the new iPhone in September, the iPad mini in October, then lots of reports. Um, you know, the iPad mini is supposed to be uh, a display of less than eight inches. We, of course, know It's that a Peter Kafka story. Yes. He confirmed it. Yes, yes. And, well, we already know that the next is seven... Patches, Patchkowski. What's that? I said I thought it was Patches. Oh, was That's it? Crazy. I thought it was Picasso. Anyway, but okay. So here, I have a little beef with uh, all things D. You guys, I saw in the headline that you confirmed it, mm. but by confirmed it, he said from like unnamed sources. Mm -hmm. Can you really use confirmed for the unnamed sources? Or doesn't when you say confirmed in a headline, like Apple confirms, aren't you supposed to say like like or, an invite has gone out to journalists or something like that? Right, it's got to be like it's. Did you think that was a little aggressive on the headline front? No, I think it's okay. We didn't officially confirm it, but I would trust him to know if something was real. Yeah. I don't think he's wrong very often. Listen, if he's so wrong... If he, if he feels like it's confirmed, it's just someone knows and isn't willing to say it on the record. Okay. So I'm, this is, I'm just saying that all things D, now the reputation's on the line. Because if you are going to say you're confirmed... Okay. If you say it's confirmed... Our is always on the line. That's all No, but it's, it's really on the line now. Because if... I look at all things D like that stuff is always correct. It's like they're not going to say, you know, like always like they're always double checking stuff and like, yeah, Business Insider, Gawker, TechCrunch, whatever. They're going to print anything. All things D is like a little bit more locked down. But they, I saw that confirmed and then I read it and I was like, wait a second, I'm looking mm. for confirmed from who? From Apple, from a supplier. And I was like, from nobody or unnamed sources. I was like, wait a second. But it does make total sense. So, so you know, Google came out with the Nexus 7 this summer. It's been a big yeah. hit, $199 yeah. for... Uh, It'll be 299 for the iPad one. Okay, so, so how... But I don't have... Uh, that's not confirmed, by the way. Right, so how do you think the iPad mini will change the market? It's going to be one of the best-selling products Apple's ever had. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, look at, look at how well the iPad sold at 599 699 and 799 But it was the 899. first one in the market. There it doesn't matter. No? People don't want a Nexus 7. They don't I, want to... I, I wanted a Nexus 7. You I bought one. a Nexus I, 7. You bought it or I, I bought it? 
I bought this with my you own money. You bought that with your own money? My <laughs> own money, man. <laughs> I, I said to uh, myself. But you wanted it because it was 199 and you wanted the 7-inch form factor. Well, I wanted to see what it was like to use a 7-inch tablet. Right. And I wanted to have an Android device. Okay. so And yeah. it's Jelly Bean. And I actually really like it. It's great for reading. It's great for browsing. It's awesome. The 7-inch, awesome. as I guess one of the Apple executives said in the, in the emails from the um, Samsung case, mm -hmm. the 7-inch is great for email, it's great for games, it's great for media watching, and it's just bad for surfing the web. And that's the truth. It's, it's not fun to surf the web on the 7-inch. You have to, unless you have like Clearly or some reader kind of app to read stuff. It's just too small. It's going to be a huge, the, the iPad 7 will be the hugest, that, that'll be the gift of yeah. Christmas. It's going to be, Well, I, I'm, I'm sure iPhone 5 sells more because so many people have them, but I think iPad 7-inch mini is going to be much bigger than the iPad. And does it matter what Amazon comes out with next week? That'll be a huge hit too. These, I mean, there's so much pent up supply for a hundred dollar demand. Two hundred dollar demand. Okay. Is that what you I said? said? Supply. There's so much demand. Sorry, I'm a little tired. There's so much demand right now for these hundred dollar for these devices that anything at 199, 299, 99 is going to fly off shelves. Even the Web OS one. Remember when the Web OS one came out and it was the Palm one? And it was like they discounted it to 199 because they were clearing it out and shutting it down, and everybody bought them up. It's crazy. Oh, well, and what is where does the Surface fit in? That's they said that's $199. How could that be $199 with those? That looked like it was a $500 device. It's bigger, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Liz? iPad Mini is going to be a huge success or just okay success? I don't. I'm not the hardware first generation early adopter. I kind of learned my lesson on that one, so I'm willing to wait and see on it. But I mean, it's it's not really like a first gen because it's oh iOS has been out and the iPad's been out. I mean, I just think it's going to be huge, especially yeah, with you young know, people. I don't know. Are all the apps going to resize right or whatever it is? Like, there's always something. He, he, Such a wow! So conservative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember. on the devices, I'm conservative. You, you know, expense that stuff to all things. Days. Let I, Rupert Murdoch pay for it. Go ahead. I want the the iPhone five though. Yeah, you can just buy that, right? Insta buy. You're not going to wait. Buy. Insta buy. Let, let me start out by saying I am an Apple fanboy. Of course, we all. Okay, so Who can so be? so you can take this for a grain of, with a grain of salt. It's like but, being an oxygen fanboy. Are you are you also into pizza? <laughs> oh wow, me too. Yeah, me too. Do you like ice cream? Yeah, go ahead. So Keep so with an iPhone. You know, once I got past 50 years old, I can't read the text, okay? So having a smaller device that's not as big as that, because yeah. sometimes I feel a little silly walking around with my iPad. You it know, is pretty I'm, dark. It looks you like know? you're, like, taking a survey. <laughs> you do. Yeah. But, but, but like when I walk from my car into the office with my iPad in my hand, I feel like I'm a stock image, you know? Like, <laughs> like I'm a stock image of, like, a douche CEO, mm -hmm. like... But, but coming the, from my Tesla with the iPad, but, like, the, but, but the reality is that CEO. the iPad is connected to my body. I mean, I yeah. just use it all the time. No, that is the my seven device. inch is so beautiful. You should put it right in your suit jacket. It's I don't know about the ladies, but go. maybe it's a purse thing. Like you could, this, do you own a purse carrying that you could put an iPad in? I don't carry a purse most of the time, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. But well, what I, about your Birkin bag? You could fit it in your Birkin, right? <laughs> you got to pay me a lot more money before I Liz, buy a Birkin bag. It, do all three of your Birkin bags fit your iPad, or only two of them? Her <laughs> husband um, works at Facebook, my, man. I don't use my iPad during the week. She has uh, five Birkin bags, one for each lunch. You have five Birkin bags, right? One for each, one for each lunch, Monday's lunch, Tuesday's. And, but the iPad, that's the thing about the, the Nexus. It's so tiny. No, it, it feels really good. You can good. put it in the back pocket of your jeans. OK. Maybe not girl jeans, but for guy jeans. Yes. I read sometimes when I'm going to sleep. Yeah. You ever drop your iPad on your face? No, I actually haven't done that, but that's okay. pretty funny. But I'm, I'm just saying. Have you done that, Tyler? You no. dropped your iPad? You've you fallen fall asleep and had your iPad in your head, Karen? No. Liz? You've... iPad falling on your face while sleeping like this? No? What? Have you dropped your iPad on your face like when you're reading? No. It? Okay, so. I so. have got an arm strain holding it up like exactly. this. Exactly, yes. that's what I'm getting at. Then you're like, and you're in bed and you're like sideways and you're putting, like propping it against the pillow or like against your spouse. There's, there's, there's money first to make. First world problem, man. It is arms. the first world problem. So, yeah, that's so, what I need is a swing arm. Yeah. I'm just like, whoo. Yeah. I think that's like the, uh, you know, the fat people in um, uh, the Pixar film, Wally. -E? Yeah. That's what that, that's what that yeah. is. It's like they're all got their iPads yeah. and they're floating. Yeah. So, so I just think that having something a little bit smaller, that is just going to be convenient. And you know what? The bottom line is we're going to buy the new iPhone, the new iPad. Everybody will just buy them because that's yeah. what they do with Apple products. Yeah. 
the iPhone 5 is the shortest success just because of people who didn't upgrade to iPhone 4 or iPhone 4S. There are so many people I meet who are like, I didn't, and I see them pull out an iPhone 3G and I'm like, oh, you poor bastard, man. How long have you been, you've been using that for two years? You don't have an iPhone 3G, do you, Liz? No. Did you have an iPhone 4 or 4S? 4. See, I even kind of feel bad for Liz with not having a 4S. Yeah. Really? No. Why? Because you use Siri all the time? Ouch. Yeah. yeah oh, exactly. No, it's because of like the I speed. It's like Liz, you open I, an I, app I up. It takes like, like eight it. minutes to open an app on a 4. But if you yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm ready for the refresh. I want so, the new one. It is slow. I mean, the iPhone 4 is slow. When you put it up against the iPhone 4S, it's slow. You put the 4 next to the 3 because my husband's using the 3 and I have the 4, and it's painful. That's oh, painful. God. I see somebody with that. I'm, it's like somebody's like... They got a prosthetic leg or something. I'm like, oh man, you uh, lost your leg in the war. You have an iPhone 3G. Oh. Jason, I have to say that Apple does need to be a little bit more aggressive with design on the iPhone. The iPhone 5 looks like a design disappointment. It does. I agree. It looks okay. like it's the same phone. So, so Google was kind enough to give everybody who went to Google I/O the the new Jelly Bean phone and yeah. the Nexus 7. Right. So, so I I have that Jelly Bean phone, and when I hold it. It just feels hot. Yo, that's the thing about the Samsung phones. They're so it, much hotter than the iPhone so hot. hardware. It's just, it's just, it's, it's curved is, and smooth. It's got a huge screen. The iPhone and, 4 has that band around it, which is like the best industrial design. But I have to say, the Samsung is so thin. It is. And bright. And, and curved. Large right. And curved. The yeah. problem. It's butter. The problem is the experience for me feels like I'm in, in a Windows environment. Every app looks different, mm -hmm. and it just. I don't have that much time. Yeah. Good. I just don't have that much time to like upgrade the software on my phone, like with the yeah. with the yeah. Android stuff. Yeah. What's the last story? Last story. Come on, come okay, on. well, I think, I think it's fun to talk about app.net since that's one of the more interesting stories of sure the summer. Um, as you probably know, they had a $500,000 goal, which they did meet. Uh, they actually raised $803,000 uh, by the time their Kickstarter-like campaign was done. Um, the whole idea is to build an alternative to Twitter, Facebook, those kind of guys who are all about trying to make money off of their users. Um, they have already launched an alpha version. Uh, it costs 50 bucks to get in. Uh, they won't charge you, of course, until you actually are, are allowed onto the onto the network. And I know Jason has uh, has already been using app.net. So is this a legitimate? Well, let, wait, wait, let, let's define using. I've logged into it twice. Okay, you've logged okay. in twice. Yeah. Is does this actually stand a chance? I, I think it's a 10% chance, but boy, do I hope so. Because after I read the announcement today, this week, that Twitter was going to set, you could buy my followers. Essentially. Essentially on Twitter. Not all of them. Not all of them. Just the most engaged ones. Yep. So my competitor, like I can go and be like, oh, I'm going to create, I don't know, a competitor to the, the D conference, right? So I'm going to create the E conference. And I'm going to um, follow the, I'm going to buy the followers of the, of Waltz and Kara's and All Things D and Liz's followers, the most engaged ones, and then hammer them with ads for my e-conference. That seems like interference. Like it seems like it's illegal. You know, like when you could. It, well, like Facebook's showing ads to your friends. Yeah, it just like feels really wrong, because it feels like I spent all this time building my follower list, and I know I'm not paying Twitter anything and whatever, but. The fact that they're selling my competitors, my followers, that feels wrong. And it's like then shutting off all the APIs and nobody can make a... I like the fact that Twitter was open to third party stuff and it's my content. Right, and they won't even show anymore which to, which app you use. I, you know, I'm absolutely tweet. willing to make uh, app.met my primary interface for Twitter mm -hmm. since they reserve the Twitter names. Like your Twitter name is reserved on app.net, which is kind of brilliant. So like, okay, I'm at Jason on app.net, fine. I'll just use app.net. Isn't app. that exactly the same thing? They're, still, they're, they're appropriating the relationship that's already been built on Twitter for their competitor? Oh yeah, they're doing that, yes. Then that could be illegal too. I don't think it's legal. I mean, have you ever bought a Google ad for one of your, against one of your competitors? People yes. do that all the time. Yes, of course. And you can't use their brand in yours, right? But here's the thing about that. It's not like I'm buying your mailing list, right? It, you know, so like, it's not like the search was ever mine, but mm -hmm. my follower list, it felt like I built it. I put it at the bottom of my business cards. I told people, follow me on Twitter. Like, I took the time to curate and build this list. It feels to me more like my email list than it does Twitter's 
but Viva you Lake. can't export it. You can't take it anywhere. Well, you can export it, sure. Mm-hmm. And I can. I used to be able to log into other services and find my Twitter friends on them before they stopped letting me do yeah. that. It just feels like Twitter doesn't want to play nice. And it's just weird to me that they're taking this approach because I don't. Is it really necessary to be this hardcore? They want to make money. I know, but I don't think that they have to be this hardcore to make money. Yeah, I don't think they need to be. And so I, anyway, I just feel like I'm. I'm going to use app.net because right now app.net doesn't have a checkbox to um, there's no checkbox to log into to, to syndicate my posts yet, but they're going to make that he said very quickly. And when that happens, I'll just make it my default. Right, because most of your followers aren't on on app.net yet. Yeah, no, none of them are. No. Um, and I'm never going to be able to rebuild that list, but I love the idea of it being my syndication. I'm just resetting my password here so I can log in. I don't know. Have you reserved your name, Liz? Did you give the 50 bucks? No. You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be a, a hater or a skeptic, but I guess I just feel like the audience is already on Twitter, and I don't know. I don't see that compelling of a reason to to jo- jump over somewhere else yet. I mean, I, I appreciate that if they become a, va- a valid competitor, then maybe Twitter will not be able to be such a dictator. But I don't know. I mean, you can say that they're not built around taking people's money, but they are because you have to pay to join. Yeah. I, I think what they should... This I mean, is if I you think- look at, like, did you see... Um, Diaspora's founders just gave up control of it this week to their community. Yeah, and does give up control, is that a new colloquialism for we quit? Yeah, you know, it's kind of, it's an open source project, so, you know, who, who owns it anyway? But, but yeah, I mean, basically, they were trying to do an alternative to Facebook that was, was better and more conscious and didn't make the same errors that Facebook had made about pissing people off. So I think pretty similar to the premise of app.net. And it, it kind of existed, but it didn't have the same life to it. Yeah. Um, they only raised $200,000. I mean, well, there's I mean, two things. Yeah, that was like the, the most ever at the time. Right. 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 That's true. Yeah, now it seems right. so quaint. Oh, later. you raised $200,000. Only raised $200,000. 200, <laughs> we raised $10 million for the you know, Android game platform. Oh, that's, it, was a, it was over a million, right, for the... Um, the Android one the is OAF. up to $7 million. It hit, I think. Um, I don't know. What do you think about how Twitter's acting? I mean, you guys have a Twitter relationship with Nimble, right? We, we do. We do. And is it, it an official certified relationship? Or there aren't the many of those yet. There aren't. There are none of those. Oh, there's only like three or four of right, those yet. Right. But you're going to have to do that. We, we have are. no choice we, and, now. And, and we have good relationships with their with their product team. I, I think that, in some respects, you think about what Twitter does, and it's not dissimilar to a highway like mail. Like, like your connections and your communication. And some could argue that wouldn't it be nice if it was just part of the pipe that we didn't have to worry about monetizing it. But yeah. they do. They're a business. I think that there's a fine line in the dance that you do in, in monetization and, and maintaining the community right. and your relationships with them. And I think that they'll find their way in that. But right now it's, it's hard. I think it's hard for the, the users and, and the vendors who are trying to do the dance with them, because ultimately we, we all will have to do that dance with them. I think um, the, that Twitter is um, going to lose some of the lead, you know, mavens. They're going to go to app.net and make that their default ecosystem, and the developers are going to start getting there. And then what will happen is some somebody will make something truly innovative with app.net mm-hmm. that'll start pulling people, right? And so that's where app.net, they need to have that moment where they create something that's super cool mm-hmm. that everybody's like, oh, I want to be on there. Like, let's say they let you import all your tweets into it and replicate them, right? They're my tweets. Yeah. So somebody should make a tool that lets me export my tweets and put them on app.net or, you know, some, some API, clever tool. The API would be shut down. Right. But if there's some API, it, it, there's going to be some things that you'll be able to do with app, app.net that you won't be able to do with Twitter very soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to make people very happy. Like people will start making tools to export your Facebook and your Twitter lists and put them on there, all that kind of stuff. And it could tip people over to wanting to use. I don't know what it is, um, but I, I applaud them. I think they've got somewhere between, you know, like a, a legitimate 5 and 10%. I would say 10% chance of having a million users, a million uniques a month within a year. I think, no, I think it's probably 50% chance to have a million uniques a month. I, I, I think the harder that Twitter pushes on 
uh, the hard edge of, of their monetization side, if, if they're not as careful about it, will push more developers and, uh, and, and hardcore users to investigate alternatives. All right, so let's wrap up. Uh, Liz, where do you see Facebook stock price in one year? Go. Uh, Wait, no, I get to promo my thing. Oh, yes, promo, of course. Give me 30 seconds. I will. Um, promo. I am running the next D conference. It's all about mobile. It's in New York. It's in October. Oh, very nice. Um, it's Ina Freed and I, our lead mobile reporter, are putting it on, putting the content together. We have Andy Rubin from Google. We have the CEO of Nokia, Mozilla. Mm -hmm. We have a VP from Facebook. We have um, some good global speakers coming in. We're still looking for demos. So if you're launching something and it's awesome, and we've launched like Siri, we launched uh, Jawbone, all sorts of stuff like that at previous conferences, and we want to talk to you. Um, and cool. so that's in New York in October, Dive Into Mobile, um, yep. Buy All Things D. And this is the second one, right? How many companies are going to launch this? Very few. It's not like a. It's not a startup conference. It's not. Um, there's no competition. There's no judges. Uh, we just pick three or four companies and we bring them on stage and do a, like a long form demo. I think you guys have seen that before. Yeah. Previous. Yeah, conferences. I did it from. I did it from Mahalo five, from five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah two thousand seven. Two thousand seven from Mahalo. So say if we had our nimble mobile version ready to launch in October. <laughs> yeah, quite possible. You have to apply. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be, yeah, but it's, it can't just be like the mobile version of the website. It's yeah, gonna, no it's, features. It's got to be a new product. Yeah, it's got to be like, it's got to have some really strong, that's at least the way I understand it. But you could do that, right? Come up with something. Look forward yeah, to the Yeah, let me know. Yeah. Email me, Liz at AllThingsD. Uh, I'm just tweeting that to 150,000 people for you as well. Um, awesome. Yeah, and thanks for the um, speaking and, uh, gig. I will uh, look forward to it. Um, is there a panel on education or no? Anything on education? We don't we don't do panels, right. we don't do PowerPoint, we don't yeah. do pitching, we mm. just do talking. Sounds good. Right. Conversations. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Uh, all right, very cool. Everybody check out Dive into Mobile uh, in New York at the fancy schmancy Ritz Carlton in Battery Park City. That's a really cool place. October 29th and thirtieth. Uh, go to allthingsd.com to check that out and follow uh, at Liz Gaines, G A N N E S. Hey John, um, everybody can start a free trial of Nimble at nimble.com, right? Yeah, that's right. 30-day free trial, 60-day free trial. What's the code? Uh, is there a promo code? No, they just go nimble.com and sign what, up. What, 30 days free? It's 30 days free. We got to come here. Next time you come, come with like a twist code and make it 60 days. Okay, here it is. Nine, 90 days free. 90 days if you use twist. Yeah, if they, if they, if they basically use, what they got to do is email at info at nimble.com. Oh, I see. Their, their e sign up stuff. Okay. And say twist. Well, email info at nimble.com. You get 90 days instead of uh, 30 with the code twist. Very good. Hey, Karen, great job. First time reading the news. Actually, you did it before. It's been a while. It's been a while, but first very good time, job. First time since the launch ticker. Yes, since the launch ticker launch. launch. And the launch ticker is basically a research document with you and I just writing about the news all day. Well, I write the news and you comment on it. Right. And it's got 3,500 people. I know. Do we break $1,000 in monthly subscriptions? I, when I checked this morning, we were at 995. And that's wow. why I tweeted, we are this it, close. It's pretty cool. Like, it's, yeah. it's kind of cool. That it's, and how many, what, what's the average person paying Most per month? Most people are giving 10 bucks. So it's 100 yeah. people put 10 bucks up. And so that's $1,000. Yeah. And so with two researchers and me working out, I'm losing like 10 times a month. No problem. But no, it's a pretty good start, actually. If, you, yeah. if we could do that for 10 months, it would basically pay for the cost of doing it at some point. And yep. there's a sponsor now. Yep. And they're going to spend 2000 a month, so that's 3000 And then we're going to, in seven days, we're going to launch the new feature. That's right. How's that going? Is we going to have it ready? I'm going to take a look at it right after this. Good. All right, yep. show me. All right, uh, everybody go to launchticker.com. Uh, and Tyler, uh, back in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. Stockholm Syndrome. Yep. And there was supposed to be some incredible insight today. What happened? No, I have one queued up. It's in the batter's box, and it wasn't appropriate uh, today to. Well, none of you. So. I mean, we're talking about your. Not, not many of your insights are appropriate, Tyler. No insights. Zero uh, insights. So zero uh, insights. A little, little distracted. Hey, um, programming note: Zach, um, who is one of our engineers, will be leaving either today or next week, or I don't know. He resigned. I don't know what day he's leaving. It's, His last day is next Friday. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't need to know these details. But anyway, all I know is the I kid did you a were really. The CEO. What's that? I thought you were the CEO of this No, I weekend. know, but I don't care about the detail of when he leaves. Well, I will tell you is Zach did um, a really hard job, a really great job, worked very hard for me. Uh, and uh, for that, I thank him and wish him luck as a graphic designer at Sketchers. Business Insider. 
At Skechers. At Skechers. Yes. I better be getting some free Skechers, man. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Zach better steal some Skechers from the storeroom and ship them over here. If, but Skechers aren't for guys, right? Isn't that Kim Kardashian kind of stuff? Like, no, you can buy Skechers for men. No, no, men, Skechers. Men, that's men not, don't wear Skechers. Men don't wear Skechers, man. Get you, Kids here, wear Skechers. She better, he better send Carolyn some Skechers. Good luck, Zach. We'll see you uh, on the rebound. And uh, thanks, Liz. Thanks, uh, John. Thanks, Kieran. And I'll see you all of you in October, October 29th and 30th at Dive into Mobile, the All Things D Mobile Conference. See you next time. Thanks, Liz.